Howdy ho there, it is update time on this jalopy junker that most of you guys agree should not have been saved and is a complete waste of time. I agree, but it's not a waste if you enjoy it, right? So we got it running in the first video and I guess we'd call this a, a part two. Appreciate you guys tuning in, by the way. I know it can be painful to watch some of what goes on. Uh, look, those tires are holding there. Very nice. We need to get it driving and out of the garage and then figure out something. Oh, let me get this rigged on up. Oh yes, we gotta fill up the rad, which is completely empty. I guess since uh, it's the winter time, we'll use some antifreeze and hope it holds, right? By the way, thanks to the guy who commented on this feature, the grill is actually uh, hinged. It has a spring in there. So I guess if you're working on it and you lean over to get that one spot you missed on the fender, take a misstep, oh, run into it. It's like, oh, you didn't put a hole in your grill. Probably more for like pulling and parking spots, but we're walking by, working on that part under the hood. Ah, and get in here with a good footstep. Built forward tough. Find a rad, I'll go ahead and use the slightly used antifreeze out of the Fury. Is uh, when we were switching out the, the coolant, you know, save, save that. I wonder if the freeze plugs are gonna be rotted out. I didn't even check them. Gotta be a reason it's empty, right? Unless somebody drained it. Oh, we're leaking. Yeah, it looks like a freeze plug. I was so dumb, I should have just poured water in it. I'm sorry, core plug. Every time I call them freeze plugs, people are like, you know, that's not the reason for them. They do usually pop out when the block freezes, and sometimes they can save the block, though. I've seen that. Can we do look at that? It's one of the easy to access freeze plugs. Although the rest of them are probably ready to pop as well. Might just be the rust holding them together. Since I'm really just trying to find out if this thing drives, I've got a better idea. Drain out all that antifreeze. Go ahead and pop this one out. Wow, that was really easy to get out. Just hit her in and pull it out with my fingers. It's never that easy. And glancing inside, that block is not very rusty at all. Unlike, you guys remember the, the Mopar block and the Fury, oh my gosh, it's completely clogged up. Do we have a plug in stock? I thought I had some freeze plugs in here somewhere. There it is, got an old used plug. It's brass and it seems to be the right size. Look at that. Oh, don't even have to run out to the parts store or nothing. Let's use a wire brush to clean the rust out of the hole. <laughs> Little brake clean and wipe her down. Smear RTV around the new plug for insurance. Line her up straight in the hole with your fingers. Hopefully it'll stay. Run her home. And that's what you end up with. Although I'd say grab a socket and run that in a touch deeper. Using this tool, it just seats them flush. On the five other plugs, I just rubbed RTV all over them for now, which should be good enough. Now we can top her the rest of the way off and cross our fingers. Three gallons total, no drips. Of course, we're going to be ripping the seal off the rad cap because we don't want this building up any pressure. Next on the list is steering and brakes. Because, you know, we don't have a key for this. I guess I could spit shine these seats a little bit too or throw something over them. But I don't know, I should probably look up a video on the best way to bypass these Ford locks. Maybe we'll just use the method we did last time and yank the whole thing out. Uh, it's, it smells really good in here, but still a little something something going on. So I, I pull up this dash and you know, look at that. See, so yeah, there's bundles in there. I think the, something was behind there, so I'll leave it alone for now. But uh, yeah, you know, it's better than it was. At least you're not, uh, stuff's not falling down on you. Let that foaming action go to work. And there we go. A quick spit shine it really works wonders. Yeah, the seats are still shot, but there's a good look at the original color. And uh, a lot of people commented in the, the first video that, like I said, it had 42,000 miles, but it's probably 142. And you guys were saying since this was last parked in probably 87 or 90, early 90s in that range, maybe it's original. But looking at this steering wheel, you know, all the uh, texture is completely gone up here. So I would think that's definitely over over 100K when you get that on there, polished up. <sighs> there it is. 
I'll bet you instead of drilling that, I could have just hammered the pin in on the bottom and pulled the whole thing out. I think that would have been a better way. Well, I got it turning with the screwdriver. We can get back to lock. We can go to what seems like would be run and start, but nothing happens. I don't know. I mean, my drill didn't go in deeper than it had to. Of course, the other reason it might not be cranking over, no lights on with the key on, is this little guy. Positive off the battery. You have what I think is probably a fusible link, and that, that could be blown. Or just a corroded ignition switch. Lastly, before we fire this up and try to move, is the brakes. We had checked the master, had fluid. Never did press the pedal, so let's see. All right. A little, a little locked up. Well, that means the bore is pretty rusty, but let's give it the old push and see if it comes back. Oh, there it goes. Doesn't want to come back. That's okay. Oh, there goes our first blowout. Right down under the engine on the subframe. It is official test drive time. Got no brakes, so this seemed like a good place to try her out. My gosh, she is driving perfect. We got about a half tank of fuel. Earmuffs, of course, because this thing is a box. get our ignition hooked back up. I had to shut this off to have a conversation with them. They've got this amazing property out here, but yeah, got a little bit of daylight left and then a lined up buyer for this thing. So let's get some, make sure this trans is good. Get a little bit more uh, driving in because it is a, it's a joy to drive it. I mean, no brakes, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's good to work on your technique with that because God forbid your brakes ever go out. You want to, you don't want to have to think. You want to act immediately. Oh, starts right up. Getting a little bit jammed up in the wheels here, but uh, luckily everything is very wet and mushy out here. Look at that, oh, it's good stuff. Uh, so no real need to worry about a, a fire. Of course, we do have a, a, a fire extinguisher if need be, but. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have stopped. I'm hoping if maybe we just dig the pile out in the front. I mean, look at that, it's just sitting in gear. Oh, this is not good. Need some traction boards.
truck. But it feels good. I'm far away from it because it's really muddy up near there. So let's give her a little tug without getting stuck. <laughs> All right, we got her. It's getting dark, but what do we do now? We give it another go. We ran her through all the gears, shifted wonderfully, didn't overheat at all. And, it, and then we don't have a temp gauge, but it would be boiling over if it was overheating. You can see the power steering belt uh, held on too. So yeah, it's uh, that's a good test drive. I get it loaded up and on the way to delivery. So we got the Lincoln dropped off here. The proud new owner, Paul. He's gonna. Hi folks. What, what's your plan with this thing, man? I think we're just gonna cut it up and uh, rat rod the drivetrain. Yeah, that's it. So <laughs> the 460 will get a new life, which is awesome. You know, originally this probably would have been just taken off to the salvage yard and crushed. Maybe the, the alloy wheels saved, but probably not even that. And. So he's going to send us some pictures or possibly even do a video on it uh, and, and I'll be sure to update the description down below if and when that happens. Uh, you were even talking about maybe starting a YouTube channel, Paul? Well, I'm hoping to. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, so it might be his first video on this and uh, he's got a heated shop up in here. And this is your, what year is it? This is a 29. He built this awesome rat rod Ford pickup truck with a flat rod. Oh. That head with a blower on it. Look at that. Wow, look at that supercharger. That thing is cool. What is that off of? Uh, they put a lot of them on the 57 uh, Studebaker Superhawks. All right. How's this thing run? Pretty good? Yeah, it runs good. <laughs> <laughs> it runs real good. Dude, this is a really cool looking ride you put together. So. Hopefully you can do something similar uh, to the Lincoln, right? Like a Mad Max Ripper? I've got to try to do something. I don't know what I'm going to put it in yet, but uh, anything with a big obnoxious V8 can't be all bad. <laughs> yeah, totally. Is this thing, uh, this is manual too? What transmission is behind this? That's a 39, it's a three-speed Ford. Okay, synchronized or just? Yeah. Gotcha. Very cool, man. Well, I'm glad you got a nice heated space to, you know, to work on this what stuff. What are doing this stuff without it? <laughs> Yeah, I just got a heated garage this year, so it's been uh, the last spring. You gotta love that. Oh, it's great. Told him it comes with the corn stalks back I there. To keep the corn stalks too? Yeah, you get to have, have a little bonfire. And we said he'd buy this off me as long as it starts out. Let's cross our fingers, it still starts. And let's see why it wouldn't. Come on. Well, these are good again. Uh, here, here you go. Of course, now it doesn't want to start. There it is. Sounds good, right? Yeah, it does. Oh, so it needs a little bit of carburetor tweaking. Yeah, you know. Once it's warmed up, though, perfect. It just needs that choke dial in. And now, switching gears to a little action on the 96 Dodge Ram turbo diesel Cummins 
five speed four by four wonderful truck i picked this up probably like seven years ago i guess for ten thousand dollars all my friends said i was absolutely crazy spending that much on an old vehicle but it's been just a true workhorse and kind of the the gem of my fleet for a long while but now turning a little bit more into a work truck I've now got 218,000 miles on the clock and the few issues I want to address today are the fuel pressure has been dropping closer to zero as I'm cruising down the highway with the trailer behind me, full acceleration. So I want to replace the fuel filter. Looks like I last did it at 207,000 miles. It's due every 12K, so yeah, we're right around there, 11,000 miles. And then want to replace the thermostat too with an updated Cummins one I'll show you. But the, the temperature gauge in this always it goes between like 140 and 190. As soon as it climbs to 190 going down the highway, it'll jump down to 140. And from what I read online, it's actually normal for these to do that because it's such an efficient cooling system. And I guess once that thermostat opens, it uh, causes it to drop real quick but apparently Cummins has an updated part that's gonna rectify that. The last item is this utility body, which pretty rust free, good condition, got it off the F-250 and essentially free. I made what, 800 bucks on that truck and got to keep this, which is awesome. I've really been avoiding taking the bed off because this is such a beautiful truck. I mean, it's probably worth, geez, 20 grand the way it is, maybe 15, 20 grand. I don't, if you guys seen how much these are selling for, it's crazy. But this bed just doesn't work for me. I don't need the, the full width, and unless I'm putting my Rhino in here, but I have the, the M101A2 military trailer, can always tow behind if we got that. So I'm thinking, let's just put it on the way it is before doing a paint job, see if I like the utility body, and get used to it, then go from there. Keep this one for now, though, for sure, in case you decide to sell this and buy a different truck. I'd say the only things I don't like about this second gen Ram is the fact that it doesn't have the rear doors. Those didn't come out till 98, no power windows. And boy, it just rides like a brick going down the road. I mean, uh, but it's three quarter ton truck. That's to be expected when you're unloaded. Just two bolts. We got the alternator tucked out of the way and just so much space in here. I mean, look at it. It's such a, a joy to work on these engines. You got to replace a turbo, exhaust manifold, all right there. Injection pump right on top. Water pump's only two bolts. I should probably just put one in there as preventative maintenance right now, you know? What a great design. Super easy to access. Will you believe a lot of modern cars, you can't even replace the thermostat. It's just a, the whole housing you gotta get it's made out of plastic. Ridiculous. Don't see nothing wrong with that, but here's the new part number 393-4373 Cummins. This is apparently uh, better, although it looks identical. So whatever, you know, preventative maintenance here. We'll see if it fixes the fluctuating temperature gauge. Uh, it is a different part number, so yeah, I'm excited. Let's get this housing cleaned up a, a bit. It didn't come with new O-rings, but I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with these. You got one big heavy one on the inside. Cast iron, built for life. Definitely should have got a new one of these main O-rings or seals, whatever, but uh, put a little RTV insurance in there and this seal presses up against the block and get a good seal, drop this in. That's all buttoned up, topped off. Next on the list is the low fuel pressure. So I'm sure it's just the fuel filter because last time I had that happen, it was uh, 
the filter had a bunch of gunk on it. So under the hood, I do keep a brand new spare in case that ever happens again, along with a spare good used fuel pump, lift pump. Yeah, let's pop that old one out and see what it looks like on the inside. These filters are actually a water separator as well. And a little uh, valve goes on the bottom of it. And I can't show you because it's kind of buried, but usually every tank or two, I'll take a little cup and you push the switch here, uh, the valve, and you can see if there's any water sitting on the bottom if you got bad fuel. Of course, it's not that accessible, but if you just jam your hands in there, if I can get it out of here without spilling, there we go. Oh, doesn't look like any water contamination. But if you fill up at a station and then all of a sudden it starts running sluggish, that's the first thing you should do on a diesel is go check the bottom of the filters, see if you got any water in there. Of course, there is a water and fuel sensor on the bottom too, but those can go bad. So it's best to just check. There we go. Here's a look at the valve I was pushing and the sensor for water and fuel. Seems like this would be uh, prone to failure, a little valve on there, but uh, it's never leaked on me yet. Basically, if these get covered in water, there's less resistance and uh, that'll set a light, water and fuel light. So that's what it's looking like. Kind of slimy and sludgy. And yeah, see all that black sludge on there? Now last time I had this happen, I had ran a, a tank or two of heating oil through this truck, driving it off road. And then I ended up with the clogged filter. It, it was much clogged, much more clogged the last time, but I don't know, I'm starting to think maybe I have an algae problem in this fuel. I, I did add a treatment the last time because I saw some comments about, hey, you, you probably have algae in the tank, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty clogged up. I think that was the problem. So get the new one on so we don't get good fuel pressure under load, then we have a bad pump. I mean, at least we know the filter's doing a good job. But see, here's what it should look like. See the inside? It'll look nice and clean like that. In the outside, I mean, I can just feel it. Yeah, it's all slimy. Now we come up top and take a 10 millimeter socket and crack the bleed screw loose. And then here's a look at the pump that's mounted down on the block. You basically push this primer bulb in a bunch of times until fuel comes out of that. It pays to have long arms for this job, but yeah, Easiest way to do is pop that rubber boot off and then get yourself a broomstick, line her on up with a plastic plunger and go to town. You just watch that bleed screw until you see nothing but fuel coming out of it. Now I can snug back down the fuel bleed and put this rubber cap back on. If you prime the system properly, it should fire right up and run without problems. Earlier today, I finally put a little exhaust tube in going out, so I got my rubber hose and then a four inch PVC out the side. So you can run cars in here and it's, it's great.
what you guys are thinking. You ruined the truck. It looks like poo. Uh, that's exactly what Jen said when I showed her a picture went in last night. She's like, what did you do? Well, I assure you, if we keep it, do some kind of paint job probably. But for now, get this bolted up, wired up, and use it. See how I like it? If the utility bed is my thing. But luckily, it fits real good. Uh, you can see the, the gap. It's just dead balls perfect. Pretty, pretty big gap between the bed, but you know, four fingers. I'm good with that. It's actually nice because when you push a motorcycle up against the front, uh, you know, if this flexes, it's not going to hit the cab. And now when I'm out doing a job, instead of having to climb on in here and find my straps or tools, I could just pop on out. Boom. I know these aren't very deep compared to a dually, but this is this is amazing. I am so stoked to rock this. As you can see, that uh, rain switched over to snow last night. They were calling for five to eight, but we got one inch of slush basically. And I don't know if I showed this. I, I just finished doing these pavers. I had that the pal of the pavers that was sitting over there forever, and finally used them for right here. There's a better look at them. Okay, final mounting is done. We got two bolts in the front, four in the rear, fuel filler neck. Only needed slight modification. Had to bend this to get that on there. Replaced one side marker with an LED. Ordered some seven inch rounds on the bottom because there's moisture in here and you can see that the bottom ones aren't LED so they're not timed right. But uh, lights all wired up. The Genie hitch fits just perfectly under the bumper. Installed a tag light with the tag. Drilled a new hole for the spare tire since this was on a Ford before it was over there. And the only door that had substantial rust under it was this guy. So I pulled back the, the seam. Actually I hit it with the, the needle scaler first and ton of crud came off it was really chunky but once i got those separated you know i think just to get some extra life out of this i filled the cavity shot some uh, blaster multi-max in there then i'll pinch it back together and hit it with surface shield good to go i went ahead and did that on all the other doors too just blast the bottom with surface shield and shoot lube on the inside of the doors and that's one of the reasons we're not painting this like i mean it's, it's a utility body it's going to get all greasy and dirty and I don't, I really don't see the reason. Like, I think it looks beautiful and unique the way it is. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I just thought of something. I should probably take that off of there, huh? I'm gonna put our reverse camera back on. And I was gonna just screw it right to here, easy enough. But then that prevents our tailgate from folding down flush, which I would like to have as an option. So I'm thinking, let's drill a square hole. One square hole. Camera sits in there perfectly, and I was gonna hit it with some clear silicone, but you guys ever have this happen? Opened a brand new tube with this dap. It says clear, but it's white. down the highway see how our fuel pressure does and coolant temp i don't know if you can see these gauges or not but that crew is on the highway we're about 25 psi and then lay into it in fifth gear boost goes up to about 25 psi and we are holding over 20 psi fuel pressure i don't i don't think you can even see that there it is this up to 85 mile an hour pretty quickly. Running like a top, and now our coolant temperature. Let's see what that's doing. Yep, so it still does the same thing. It goes up to 190, and then it drops back down to 140 and climbs back up to 190. So again, I, I guess that's just normal for these. I mean, I'd rather see it stay at a particular temperature, but what are you gonna do? This should help fix that issue with the diesel fuel slime. Alright, I'll just drop it right in with my fluids. Got the funnel, wheel chock, 
somewhat organized. I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, put all my stuff in here, but it's definitely not organized yet by any means. I was looking up how much the, the toolboxes cost for these things and the extra shelves. A lot of money. It's like $120 per shelf or for the, the toolboxes that go in here, they're like $2,000. It's crazy. I ended up ordering a Craftsman tool chest, 26 wide by only 12 inches deep. I usually don't want something that shallow, but it should fit perfectly in that little, uh, the front box on the utility bed. It's also got those uh, soft close drawers. So when they close, it locks them shut, keeps them shut. That way when you're, you're turning, it's not gonna be pulling out. I think it'll work well, 200 bucks. While most people said the Lincoln was a complete waste of time, I disagree because I ended up getting 1200 bucks for it, which it wasn't worth anywhere close to that as scrap value. And uh, now the motor's gonna be put to good use. Also got the catalytic converters. Those are probably worth uh, 50, maybe 100 bucks a piece. Those are big ones. I originally planned for a different video this week, but then had a little scooter accident. <gasps> oh, I'm good. Tailbone. Well, maybe that fixed my back problems or not. All right, well, you know, walk it off. And that actually had me hurting pretty good for a little over a week there. It's still not perfect yet, but it's better where I can get to working on the vehicle that's behind the camera right now. As always, a massive thank you to you guys for tuning in, especially if you've watched this far, that helps out big time. I'll see you in another one very soon. And actually gonna cap this one with a little Kind of a funny story. We were checking out Pocono property, Jen and I, and I went up there solo, went to fly my drone over the ridge. So I took off and you know, most drones have a service ceiling of 400 feet without clearance or 400 feet from where you take off. So I get to almost the top of the ridge and then the thing can't go no higher. I'm like, yeah, I can't, can't fly over the mountain. So I was like, maybe I'll land it real quick on this nice looking trail and then take back off. It won't know the difference. As soon as I landed it, it lost reception completely. And I was like, oh man, I was gonna hike up. But I was like, hey, I'll take the tundra up. It looked like a decent trail. It was very steep, but to the clips. Here we go. Some of this is probably drivable, actually. Oh, I don't know. We got the air down the tires. This is pretty rocky. Oh yeah. Down, but it's motoring up. Let's see if we can find this drone. I just don't want to run the thing over. Here's roughly where it was because it was a pretty smooth landing. There it is. Yes. <laughs> that worked out. There's my drone. Drive right over top and park on this relative flat. There she is. A nice view up here. So now I can retake off from here and we'll start at zero feet. She'll be able to get over the ridge line and check out the other side. I'm just up here exploring. I accomplished the main goal that was getting over the ridge to the, the town below. And now I'm just kind of checking out all these trails, seeing how far they go. Luckily brought the Tundra, because this thing is very agile. Dropped the, uh, the tires down to 18 PSI. Much better than 40. They're mostly UTV trails, but we are kind of just following the, the ridge up here, seeing where it goes. Hey guys, you know, I was about to hit render, but then I remembered you got some loyal viewers and they say no video is complete without the goose man. Over here taking a midnight nap. Yeah, you good boy. The springtime's coming soon. We'll be doing fun stuff again. Stay. Okay, good boy.